What's up, punks? This is a uh, little short special edition of Block Digest with uh, screen sharing again, which we haven't done in years. Uh, we have Mr. Tom Trevithan here from Commerce Block to talk about their uh, state chain implementation. So what's going on, Tom? Yeah, lots recently, you know, with the getting this uh, wallet uh, kind of ready. And uh, it's uh, it's been, we've been working on this for over a year now, so it's... um. It's been a long journey, but we're we're kind of getting ready now, very close to a, a doing like a soft launch, and so we're now on mainnet and ready to uh, you know start playing around. Um, and I think uh, we're going to try and do a swap. So you have a wallet set up as well. Yes, I do. Right, I yeah. can't believe I get to say this, but I have a state <laughs> chain open on mainnet. Cool. Okay, so maybe I'll start just by explaining a, a bit about the interface and how everything works, and then. Um, uh, we can, um, yeah. Then we can, we can, we can do a do a live uh, swap um, uh, to to show show everyone how it works. Okay. So um, so essentially, yeah. This is the the wallet. So it's a it's a, a Electron app based on like React, um, but under the cover, it uses um, WebAssembly. So all of the cryptographic primitives are written in Rust. Um, so uh, essentially, it works <clears throat> very similar to a normal Bitcoin wallet in terms of the way you create and save wallets and the way you um, generate keys. So uh, I'll just quickly show what it's like to create a new wallet that you essentially each um, wallet has is, is saved in a separate file and it's encrypted with a passphrase um, and you have a 12 word seed which you can use to recover the wallet if you lose it um, so uh, i'll just yeah i won't go through the whole sequence of that i'll just load one i have previously saved so we don't have to go through yesterday's fun of waiting for your state chain to confirm Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> it uh, the the way if you deposit coins into Mercury Wallet, you have to wait for uh, three confirmations, um, in order for the uh, basically yeah, in order to then start swapping coins um, or you know, sending them to to other people. Um, so yeah, so yeah it's, it's kind of like a, a lightning channel, right? Like you have to wait for the the opening to confirm. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So essentially, the, the difference between, uh, let's say, Lightning and, and a, a state chain, what we call like a state coin. So a state coin is a Bitcoin UTXO, um, which is um, essentially co-owned by a state chain entity and the user um, via a two-party, uh, uh, basically a shared private key. And in order to sign transaction spending that output you have to do a two-party ecdsa so it's functionally similar to multi-sig uh, except that on the blockchain it just looks like a single output a normal you know um paid to public key hash output um so yeah so this is the basic the host home screen of the wallet um and here we have basically a list of every coin that has been deposited one of the important things about to, to understand about state coins is that they remain uh, as you know whole whole coins, and you have to um, spend them as, as as whole coins. So um, I'll actually I'll, I'll go to the deposit page. So when you deposit money into a state coin, um, it kind of makes sense that you deposit at certain values um, because if your aim is to to swap those coins with other people for privacy um it makes sense to for for you know the, the anonymity set is greater uh, if everyone uses you know whole value amounts the, the same logic applies to you know uh, outputs in in coin joins um so here on our, our deposit page um it, you basically get some information from our the mercury server which is the the running role of the state chain entity um and this is actually telling you uh how many coins of different amounts have been 
deposited on using the, the Mercury server um, so that you have an idea of the kind of liquidity you're likely to encounter when you, you do swaps. Um, so here we can see that basically the only amount uh, that has been deposited is 0 0.001 uh, Bitcoin. Um, you could deposit any custom value if you wanted to, um, depending on what you would, you, your, your kind of use case would be. Um, but this is really to help uh, people choose, you know, amounts that other people are going to be using when they're doing swaps. Um, so if you choose an amount, say here, um, if you wanted, you can create as many uh, coins as you like um, <clears throat> in one go. Yeah, so... so so like the custom amount would really just be for users who actually wanted to transact off chain with this. Like that's not something you would want to do if you were using this primarily for privacy. No, no, no. You'd yeah. For, but even so, I mean, the use case of doing that is it's not clear because obviously the, the whole benefit of using this is obviously you can keep sending that amount to new owners. Um, so if it was a very specific amount, maybe it was a specific amount for like a particular um you know particular item or something and then you could actually reuse that output and send that same amount to a new person um but yeah so uh once you've selected the amount uh we then basically generate this shared key um this is actually quite cool kind of cryptography um that's that's going on here so we've actually now generated a, a bitcoin address um which corresponds to a public key uh the private key of which that doesn't actually exist yet it's um the private key is actually shared between the server and this wallet um and uh so the and that that private key will actually never come into existence um but you can use both those key shares to via like a multi-party computation sign a uh transaction um and one of the properties of our state chain uh protocol is that we do when we do a transfer which i'll just I'll get, go, go on to explain um we uh can um we 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 update the key share that the server holds and the user generates a, the new owner of a state coin generates a new key share and this means that even if we were to become uh you know if even if we were to be corrupted somehow or someone hacked into our system or we were to be kind of uh, you know taken over by the authorities um that the previous owner key shares have been deleted and so there's no way that the money can be basically you know stolen um so yeah and uh, you guys use a gsm for that right um to enforce that sorry say that again you 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 guys use a, a hardware security module to like enforce the the key updates and deletions, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, on our end, yeah. Um, so uh, so yeah, so essentially now you know we've created this shared coin, and you can now pay uh, directly to this um, uh, Bitcoin address, um, which will um, yeah, as soon as the coin is received. Um, you'll see that this goes into a, uh, a mempool state. Actually, I might actually um, pay a coin to that just so I can demonstrate that. Okay, so I'll copy that address. I'm just going to pay, go to my Electrum um, and send. And then we wait for the mempool to get angry with us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so it should once this, the transactions in the mempool, the wallet should uh, should pick it up. Um, so, yeah, maybe I'll quickly go back to the home screen and explain a bit about the the different connections that the wallet has. So the wallet connects to um, every every connection is over Tor. Um, so uh, we connect to the the Mercury server. Uh, connect to a swap server, which at the moment is the same endpoint, but it's been in, uh, designed so that you could have a separate uh, server coordinating the, the the swaps. And then you have um, a basically a, a, a Bitcoin um, uh, 
server or Electrum type server that you go to get your your confirmations from. Um, so this uh, we we're, we're going to run one of these currently to set up to uh, Blockstream's um, uh, Electrum server, um, but also you can run your own one. So uh, you you would be able to use like the Electrum personal server and your own full node if you want to go um, full privacy. Um, so we can see here now that um, the coin has been we've we've th that coin I just sent has uh, has been picked up by the wallet. You can see that oh, it's already got a confirmation, so that was quick. Um, nice. Yeah, <laughs> that's very quick. <laughs> what fee did I pay actually? Um, I paid oh, I paid six satoshis a byte. Not too bad. More than I did yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, you can, if you want to see see the coin itself, you can click here. I don't think it will show on the shared screen because I'm just sharing the wallet. But this will go to a block explorer, so you can actually see the, the the coin itself. And then you've got some other data here, like privacy score, which is the total uh, number of coins that it's been swapped with. Then you've got the number of swap rounds it's done. You can add a description here. Um, Basically, so you can keep track of which coin is which, which is quite useful for you know for privacy related things. Um, then you have uh, well, we, then we I'll just quickly yeah explain the the swap um, screen. So here you have got several options to now swap this stack coin. Um, you can uh, basically either you can you can basically see that the the groups of people who have other other coins that are registered uh, on the swap server um and if five coins are registered in any one group for one value um then the swap will complete uh straight away otherwise you wait for uh, this this countdown timer to reach the this kind of uh, epoch um and then uh, even if there's just two coins in the group at that point swap complete um because we're kind of still we're, we're demoing this and, and still testing everything this is currently set to just uh, six minutes um but you know in the in, i think f for the for the launch it'll be probably one hour so we do once per hour um that the the swap will complete irrespective of the number of participants um, the reason we've done this, we we debated quite a lot about how when you don't have much liquidity, you you kind of need some kind of centralized, um, you know, time that people are going to be able to congregate around, you know, so that if you you kind of get people to try and be online at the same time. Um, so uh, this was a kind of compromise between those two. When the liquidity is higher, then you know the swaps can complete more quickly because um, there's high liquidity um, and people won't have to wait around essentially. Um, so you've got two options when you um, want to to swap. You can either you select a coin and you say join group, um, and this registers the coin uh, basically in one of these swap groups. And we can see here the 0 0.001 BTC. Now the group has one out of five uh, participants. Um, and that will then, uh, whether the group gets filled up or it reaches the, the, the timeout, um, the swap will then complete. Um, uh, and then so the, quick, the we got 30 seconds. Should I hop into this round? <laughs> um, no, no, no. I, I, maybe I'll, I'll we'll, we'll wait for the next one. It'll only be six minutes. Um, then, uh, so yeah. And then you can leave the group. Um, if you, yeah, you. Because the wallet will, net, will not let you withdraw the coin or uh, send the coin to someone else while it's in the swap. Um, we also have this this feature auto swap. So some people may just may want to leave the wallet running uh, to get as much uh, as big an anonymity set as possible. So you know they might just want to turn on auto swap and then you know uh, just leave the wallet open for hours. Uh, and in which case the uh, the coin will then automatically join swaps um, when there are other users uh, in the in the swap groups. Um, so um, the other things I'll show I could quickly show 
about how do it, how to do like a, a you know a peer to peer transfer of the the stake coin to a new user. So um, if I want to receive a stake coin from someone else, um, I will uh, go to receive, and then I can uh, choose uh, basically copy a stake chain address, which is uh, an address essentially like a the, the public key to which I want to receive the, the stake coin to. Um, this interface kind of allows you to look at all the different addresses that you've generated. Uh, if an address has already had a stake coin paid to it, uh, it's kind of highlighted in this this different color, and you get privacy warning basically to try and force you not to reuse that address again. Because if you use the same address for several different coins, um, then uh, it's yeah you you can you, you can be that, that ownership can be linked obviously. Um, although this is all off chain, but our, our privacy model is that you know we you shouldn't be trusting us with your privacy. So we, we've designed this so that um, and that I'll maybe yeah when, when we do the swap, I'll explain a bit about the swap process. That um, actually you know we we don't learn how the coins are linked in a swap. Um, uh, so. Um, so yeah, so I'll just uh, I'll just demonstrate this. So if I uh, copy that address, um, and then I was just going to send a coin to myself. So I can select this this coin here, um, send it to that destination address, and then click send. Um, and so now what's happening is um, we are yeah basically generating this um, transfer key. Uh, this transfer key is like an encoded message that has everything to do with the transfer that you'd send to the new user. This transfer key actually includes um, uh, the full um, backup transaction. Um, it includes the uh, signature on the state chain itself about the transfer of ownership and also an encoded key um, update value, which is used to update the private key. Um, but I won't go into too many. <laughs> kind of technical details about this. Um, so, um, but you, you you would want to use that message if you wanted to uh, receive, um, if you didn't know what address that uh, a coin had been paid to, you can receive with key. So you can copy and paste that key in here and receive with it. If you know which address you're expecting a coin to be paid to, you can just receive with the address itself. And so you'll query the server with that address, um, which will allow you to receive the coin. We didn't want to query the server with all addresses to receive coins because that's a privacy issue. You know, you're, you're telling the Mercury server basically all your, all your addresses. Um, so essentially, yes, yeah, so I've now received that coin back again. Um, but it's, as you'll notice it's lost all of its privacy uh, data because I've just received a new coin and it, the privacy data gets reset then. Um, so yeah, I, I guess I should mention a, quickly a bit about this expiry and the nature of our state chain implementation um, in that we use this um, lock time, uh, decrementing lock time in order to enable basically the, the, this to be not custodial. I won't use the word non-custodial because that triggers people. But yeah, just um, so that you can enforce it on chain, if the the server disappeared or a past exactly owner tried to play so, games. So the current owner always has a transaction uh, which pays directly to their own full private key, um, uh, and the next owner will have a backup transaction that can be claimed uh, earlier. So that um, even even if the Mercury server gets shut down or disappears, um, people will always be able to get their money back. Um, and the current owner will always be able to get their money back. Um, so I, I, I yeah, I sh I'll quickly just show a bit about how we deal with this in the wallet. So if you go to the settings page, you can set up all your, your connectivity to, to whichever um, service you choose. Um, then in the uh, you can manage the backup transaction, so I can select a coin. I can see how many blocks left until the backup transaction lock time uh, becomes current, and this is going to be 86 days away. Uh, I can copy and paste the raw hex of this backup transaction. Um, 
I can show the private key, which I'm not going to, because it's real Bitcoin. <laughs> um, but one, <laughs> one, <laughs> one of the issues uh, with this backup transaction that we found was that you, um, uh, the, when we this this is signed when uh, when you do this 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 uh, transfer sender function when you send the coin you sign the new backup transaction it goes to the new owner um, so it's signed before time so the question is about fees what what fee should we pay we won't know what the mempool is going to look like in in eighty six days time so um, the the issue the way we've dealt with that is to to essentially do a, a child pace for parent in order to get this transaction confirmed if you need to do that. Uh, so if, yeah, if um, uh, if if microserver does disappear and you need to, 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 to set your backup, you can basically set here, you can set a, an address and a fee rate for a child pays for parent. And you can do this in advance. And this transaction will get broadcast automatically by the wallet. Um, so as soon as that block height is reached, then the, um, uh, the, the the transaction will be broadcast automatically. Um, if Mercury server hasn't been destroyed and uh, you forget in your wallet and your wallet isn't open, so it doesn't broadcast on time, then the Mercury server broadcasts the transaction on your behalf. Um, so it's so, kind of being like, a, like what a watchtower would be to Lightning. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so that yeah, you're just waiting, but you're you're not watching the UTXO set. You're just waiting. You're just watching block height. Um, so as soon as the block height is there, then you just yeah, you want to broadcast the transaction. Um, mm -hmm. But really, I mean, you know, the you know, you want people to withdraw their coins in in good time um so obviously as, as this time counts down the wallet will kind of show this go red and give you a warning um give you pop-up warnings telling you that your coin's close to expiry um and uh, that you should you should withdraw it um, you know what i'm just thinking right now um that would probably be a ridiculously simple like little project for somebody to just write something up to have their own watchtower for that you know what I mean? Instead of depending on um, you guys for that. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, they can um, uh, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously, they they they, they can export the, the the raw hex of that um, that backup transaction. Um, they can obviously, if if someone wanted to write a script to get it directly from the the wallet file. Um, yeah, that'd be quite straightforward to do. Yeah, um, yeah, be nice little kind of just a cron job that ran. And just because uh, I don't know, I don't think like Bitcoin Core Wallet does that for you automatically. Um, you can't give it a, uh, you know, a lock time transaction and then it broadcasts it for you automatically. I don't mm -hmm. think. Yeah, that'd have to be an external handler. But yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. it'd be as simple as like grab that from Mercury and then just watch the block height and then go broadcast. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, what one last, I guess, going over this quite quickly, but yeah, one last thing is just withdrawal. Um, so withdrawal, you can uh, choose your um, uh, transaction fee, depending on the, the mempool. Um, then you uh, basically you can select multiple coins to withdraw to a single Bitcoin address. However, the only issue is this is with privacy. Um, uh, but obviously you save on save on transaction fees um uh, so but yeah essentially you select the coins place the bitcoin address and then which would be for, yeah generated by a, another third-party wallet and uh, then click withdraw as yeah, simple as that um so yeah so do we should we see if we can uh, we can do this swap then It'd be like the That's first good. kind of swap of a, a state coin on on bitcoin um so so you you have a zero point zero zero one Bitcoin stake coin in your wallet, I believe. Yes, sir. All right, uh, I think I'm all queued up. Well, that's registering real quick. I'm gonna go grab uh, my laptop charger so that we don't have a fatal battery death. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. So you've got your. Your coin is in this uh, 0 0.001 BTC 
group. Um, so I'll now uh, join that group. And so it should now, the swap server should tell us that there's two people in that group and that swap will uh, begin executing when this timer counts down in, in two minutes. Um, so the coin we can then see is kind of, it's, it shows that it's now in a, in a swap group. Um, and yeah, if I go back to the, uh, if I tried to kind of uh, withdraw this coin, it, it doesn't let me do that because it's sort of waiting on the swap. Um, so we call this phase zero. So the, the coin is kind of registered uh, for the swap and awaiting uh, the swap execution. Um, the, the swap doesn't happen instantly because uh, it's got quite a few different steps, uh, which you will see um, uh, as the, the, the swap executes these different phases. Um, but essentially, we have to do several things. So the first step is that once you've yeah, you registered the swap, the swap begins, um, you basically have to, um, yeah, you, you, you get this blind uh, token from the swap server, um, uh, and then you have to do a, a Tor disconnect. So you disconnect from the, the Tor circuit you have and get a new um, a NIM, uh, so that you, the whole idea is that the swap server cannot link who is swap with who. So uh, when you, um, yeah, so, so you basically get this 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 blinded swap token, which you then yeah, generate a new circuit and then connect with this. And with this swap token, you then get given a, an address, which you pay to, and then someone else gets given your address. Um, and then you execute the transfer. Now, the kind of the, yeah, one of the things to realize, though, is that there's only two of us in this swap. So... Um, Rats, you mean people are going to know which coin I wind up with. <laughs> Not necessarily. Well, this is the whole thing. This is why it's a little bit subtle. So if mm -hmm. you if, if people are going to treat this as a, uh, like a mixer. So, um, uh, you know, and there's, 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 obviously there's anonymity here. We don't know we, this, the, the, the Mercury um, server doesn't know who any of us are. Um, but the Mercury server would know that, these two people have joined a swap um, and attempted to swap a coin, and the Mercury server will know which the, those those two coins. Um, but actually, what happens, and we'll we'll see what happens when the swap completes, um, because the it's random. Uh, it's there's a fifty fifty chance that you'll get your coin back. So um, the the um, yeah, the, the, the Mercury server won't know whether, um, you know, you got your same coin back or you got my coin. Mm -hmm. so, and yeah. And that kind of compounds like the same way it does with a coin join. Like if yes, exactly. you swap once and then you, you do it again and again, yeah, exactly. and there's exactly. no way for so the server to track that. It's effectively for the privacy from the Mercury server is the same as doing a, a coin join. Um, that's why having a bigger group is, is better. So having a five out of five, you you, you have that, 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 that's your anonymity set. Um, so uh, so we say, yeah, it's completing the uh, transfer protocol now. Uh, so you, yours should be in phase three as well. Are you seeing that? Uh, yep. Yeah. So, so with this just two of two, coin swap, there's a 50-50 chance that I'll end up with the same UTXO that I started with. Um, but the Mercury server will not know which, you know, wh whether I received a new coin or, or, or a different coin. Um, so there's, yeah, the people may want to look at this in two different ways. So there's two levels of privacy here. One is the on-chain privacy. So, um, the on-chain um, privacy, there's going to be no record of any swaps or anything. This is all just uh, off-chain data that the Mercury server has access to. Um, so some people may want to treat this like a, a centralized mixer, um, that they just want a new coin. Um, 
However, uh, for the uh, full kind of strict privacy, you'd want to do lots of swap rounds with larger groups such that um, you uh, basically, you, yeah, you, you're, you're hiding your, your basically the, 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 the linkability of the coin you end up with, with the coin you started with, and you're hiding that data from the Mercury server itself. So that's how the, the you know it's a, it's a very kind of privacy um, first kind of design of this is that we you know we want the uh, yeah we we want the user to be kind of completely um, yeah that, that that we don't want to be able to be trusted in any way with kind of privacy uh, data. Mm -hmm. so, you know, one thing I want to point out because it's like. The interesting thing about this whole implementation is it's kind of like the exact opposite of the one that Chris Belcher is building. Like yes, he's that's right. using coin swaps to try to gain that anonymity in a way where people don't detect that a coin swap is being done. Like there is no like to blend in with literally the whole chain because you can never know if something is a coin swap or not. Whereas this is much more like a coin join. Like there's yes. a pool of liquidity in the state chain denominations. And like, there's that explicit declaration of that and the potential that these all could have swapped with any of the other ones. So you kind of get a lot of privacy benefits and building anonymity set, but you don't run into the potential of the types of problems that Belcher's implementation might, where like somebody winds up with some tainted or tracked coin unknowingly because it's not publicly obvious that a coin swap was done. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously the, the assumption here is that, that we, and we, we are going to move, we, we're kind of building a, an explorer, like a state chain explorer so that everyone can see the, um, the, 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 the chain, the, you know, the chain of ownership of a, a state coin. So that really, yeah, we sh we assume that these swaps are a public knowledge, which is the good, which is the correct assumption for privacy. And then, yeah, so each of these swaps, yeah, essentially becomes an off-chain coin join, essentially. Um, so yeah, okay. So we're awaiting transfers. You you're you're in phase three as well. Hmm. Actually, I'm not seeing anything right now. Okay, oh. so you're not in any phase at all. Did I glitch out on the network here at some point? That's okay. I mean, if the, the, the swap fails. Um, so uh, you're, you're in no phase at all. Uh, can you um okay it just gave me a removed from a swap pool message oh okay okay um so you can try and um join again let's give this another shot all right hmm it's just throwing me the remove from pool message again Okay, uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think I glitched out on the network here. Well, nothing is without bugs. This is okay. why things get tested, right? Yeah. So, um, so you're not you if you're not able to join a group. Uh, let me try closing the whole wallet out and see if that'll work. Okay.
Nope, still getting thrown, removed from pool air. Okay, so you restarted the wallet. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you're going into the swap. swap yeah, page. when I try to join the, the pool again, it's just giving me the removed from pool error. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, shit. So yeah, what, what's happened is um, for some reason, yeah, this is the uh, 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 your, you've left the for some reason yeah may, maybe you had a a, a network uh, some issue or a tour issue um so what has happened is that that coin has kind of left the um uh, has not caught up with a swap but now the swap has to time out so um as you can oh. see on my page i'm, I'm still kind of waiting uh, for the swap to complete um but that's going to take like maybe 10 minutes i think for the swap to time out um do you want me to send you a coin and then we we'll try again yeah if so, you trust me yeah of course yeah <laughs> if you if you just go to your receive your receive page and select an address and then just uh send it to me mm -hmm. all right see where is the chat in here here we go all right address sent right okay there we go okay right so now um I'll send you this coin. So now, if you, on that receive page, if you go to click, uh, just receive index. Mm -hmm. All right, it's one through. Okay, so if you now, it may take a few seconds to appear on the main page. Um, mm -hmm. If you Got now it. go to the uh, swap page. All right, let's try this again. All right, I'm in the queue. Cool. Okay, me too. So, um, wait a minute. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Right, you you do your job, Tor. You stop this temperamental <laughs> nonsense. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's one of the things which um um <clears throat> uh, we uh should yeah we 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 actually have a we we're, we're working on improving the um uh the basically the reporting on what happens when because you've got two you've got two things that can happen first the swap so if you, if you if the 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 one person doesn't respond when you're doing a swap um then the the swap will process will wait a certain time out i think it's set currently to like five minutes or ten minutes um and then if if the person doesn't respond then the swap um uh, basically quits um, but during that time you can't enter another swap because that swap's still waiting um the other thing that happens is that there's this this the thing we call the punishment list so if you consistently leave swaps without completing them then you get punished, which means you get a longer timeout. Um, and this is just to prevent people from, a, you know, you think that this is quite, kind of quite easy to, someone could just, you know, register a load of, uh, deposit a load of coins <clears throat> and then keep, you know, joining swaps and then not, you know, completing them. And that this would, um, 
uh, you know, just grief other people and kind of, you know, as a, a, a DOS. Um, so we have this uh, punishment uh, list, but it should tell you if you're being punished when you try and register the coin, it should tell you, it said, you know, you, this coin's being punished. You're going to have to wait half an hour before you can join a swap again. So, okay. So hopefully you're in phase, in phase mm -hmm. three again. Yep. So things crossed. We should... get into phase four and phase four is basically when it's finalizing the transfers all right phase four cool phase four for me so then that's basically now doing this this whole state coin transfer so it's transferring getting the new backup transaction uh, the key the private key is being um updated um, so you're you're generating a new private key, and so swap it should complete. say swap complete for coin. And now you should have a, um, a basically a, a swap set of two, which means you've completed swaps with a set of two uh, people. Um, so yeah, there we go. We've do, we've we've done our. We've done our first uh, <laughs> mainnet um, mainnet swap. Woohoo! So yeah, <laughs> and a new privacy tool is born. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, we 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 really hope that this is uh, going to get some some use. I mean, um, it's another. We we really feel that it, it hopefully should fill a gap between kind of fully on chain coin joins. Which you know, and I guess you know, we've, we've obviously we've talked about this before, and obviously there'll be lots of talk about it in the future. The the, the trust model of state chains and the trust model of, of Mercury, um, uh, in that there there is trust involved in Mercury server, although we will argue that it's it's non custodial, um, just because the way it's designed. Um, but it is certainly is, is everything is designed with privacy in mind. So it's certainly as private as on chain coin join. Um, but it has the advantages of being faster, um, potentially cheaper. Um, and yeah, we hopefully it sits somewhere in between like a you know a fully centralized mixer and then you know on chain on chain coin join. Um, and yeah, and hopefully it will yeah, give give people give people more privacy. I think really the way to think about it is you know especially it, as this evolves and can go forward potentially considering like multiple entities collaborating to run um like the state chain servers but it, i i kind of just think about it as something sort of akin to liquid except that you have a pre-signed transaction to withdraw that could never be taken back you know what I mean? Like when you try to leave, yeah, exactly. with, like you have to ask for permission from the Federation essentially. But with a state chain, like you already have permission in the form of the, the pre-signed transaction. Yeah. You always have full ownership essentially at all times. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, great. So cool. A bit of history. <laughs> I mean, dude, I've been waiting for this for the last year and like waiting for somebody like you guys to come along and start working on this since Ruben first dropped the whole like concept of a state chain years ago. Like th this is a, a layer that has a lot of scalability promises and I'm just happy to see that the first implementation of it is thinking about how to provide like more scalable privacy tools on chain. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, fingers crossed uh, it will get quite a lot of use. Cool. Mm -hmm. cool. Okay then. Um, so yeah, so I, I think, um, yeah, I'm getting called away to my kids uh, during bath time at the moment. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, this is a uh, real fun. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Was, you know, cool. you reached out to, to do this with me. I, I can now say that I did the first on chain or participated in the first on chain Xiaomi and coin join back when Wasabi first went live. And now I can yeah. say that I did the first on chain, uh, state chain coin swap. <laughs> uh, cool. So privacy pioneer. <laughs> <laughs>
I mean, it's really easy. You just sit there and wait for people to write software and then click buttons. I, I don't get why, why people think pioneering is so hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, you need to be, you need to kind of be interested in these things, you know, and, and uh, want to, yeah, want to, want to, want to get involved, which is important. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, the tools don't really help if people don't stand up and use them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and that's what we, that's, you know, that's what we, we really want to hope. I mean, the way we've designed this, uh, you know, we tried to make the wallet kind of quite intuitive, and that, uh, you know, it will kind of, you know, people. It's not just going to be like hardcore, you know, privacy maximalists using it, and that, you know, more normal people. Again, yeah, like I say again, can, the kind of people that maybe currently use kind of centralized mixers, um, and it's kind of user friendly enough uh, for that for that. For that kind of user mm -hmm. i mean like dude this is this is like a really nice simple like ux to start with for something that's kind of complicated under the hood like i think you guys have done a, a real good job in terms of the the setup of all this to start yeah i mean it was it was a kind of lot of you know we we decided to make it you know people we would we, we didn't want to try and replace people's normal bitcoin wallet so you know just keep it simple <clears throat> it does what it does um don't try and yeah don't 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 try and create a, a, a new um a, you know because originally the design was that you'd have a, a you know the wallet would actually have a, a full bitcoin um section and then a, a state coin section um but i think this is yeah trying to get people to change their their you know their their proper, you know, <laughs> uh, Bitcoin wallet that they use is, is quite a big job. So yeah, we just decided to keep it keep it straightforward. You know, make make it let it stick to what it does best. Mm -hmm. That that's going to be a, a really. I, I think one of the most Herculean like tasks ahead for Bitcoin developers is when all of these features and layers and protocols finally get ironed out and then every wallet dev out there has to start the horrifying consideration of how do we implement all of this in our wallet <laughs> yeah yeah exactly i mean that's what we you know i think we want uh, going forward i mean eventually you know the wallet of the mega wallet of the future would hopefully include you know all these protocols kind of seamlessly um yeah, it can be very complex, and I've seen the the, the complexity people have with like Lightning wallets. Um, it's a uh, yeah, it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. And that that's another thing. Um, now that this is uh, you know going to be fully going live soon, um, I'm going to start bothering the living shit out of a lot of Lightning developers about little things they could do on their end in terms of protocol specification and stuff to make it a lot easier on your guys end for state chains to start playing with lightning and not have to be like their own completely walled off gardens that can't talk to each other. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is really, this, this, there's a lot of interesting ideas with, with lightning and, and how this kind of, uh, this, this state chain concept can really plug into that and yeah, do some, do some new interesting things mm -hmm. a lot of potential just the lightning spec and protocol needs to kind of think about how to generalize a little bit more so that trying to like shoehorn a state chain into things isn't constantly having to hack around how the lightning protocol does stuff and just create weird hacks that could be a lot cleaner yeah 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 cool interesting stuff so this this was a uh, pretty fun you know thanks again for fucking uh reaching out to me to take part in this but uh yeah, i think no, no, before you, thanks, you run off so i do need <laughs> yeah. to send you your state coin back <laughs> cool yeah well i'll send you an address and... <laughs> mm -hmm. cool cool excellent well i hope everybody listening uh gets really excited about the potential uh new privacy tool coming to the block and uh yeah adios punks cool cheers man
Lawler stands here in light. Was there? Was there? That thing it just went red. Ain't got foot yet. Is it? Yes, it is. Look, Maria.